who can resist a fantastic poster for an upcoming movie? As long as there's no leaning couples involved. All right, all right, all right. While I appreciate the grandeur of theatrical movie posters, I'm also drawn to the charm of the low-key alternative poster. In this video, I've challenged myself to create three alternative posters for the phenomenal Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the 80s classic E.T., and the upcoming Wonka movie, all using various styles. So, come, come with me. And you'll be in a world. Stop that, stop that. You're not going into a song while I'm here. First up, we have the phenomenal Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and this is pretty much going to set the tone for all three pieces of art, since I'll be adopting a more painterly style than we're used to seeing on this channel. This is also going to be my first time using a brand new set of brushes, which maybe isn't the best idea when you're planning to record the process. Let's see how it unfolds. For Across the Spider-Verse, this special scene struck a chord with many fans, including me, so I thought it would be kind of cute if we recreated this scene, but using little spider versions of Miles and Gwen instead. Right, let's kick things off with a simple group gradient for our background. As you know, the film has quite a unique style, combining computer animation with traditional hand-drawn comic book techniques to create what they call a living painting. Every frame looks like a comic book panel, it's just pretty brilliant. I definitely want to try and capture some of this aesthetic in my piece, and to begin with, I'm just using the rectangular marquee tool to create some skyscraper shapes. Now I'm just going to brush in a light layer of texture. And then a hard edge brush just to create some highlights and give the buildings a bit more form. Until we have something like this. And let's use this line brush so some of the buildings have a bit of a different look. Maybe here. And some over here. Cool, let's add in some windows. A simple square brush with some spacing will do this job nicely. And we'll mix the shapes up a little bit with some rectangular windows. And we'll repeat this step with some larger, darker windows until we get this. Okay, I think my sky is upside down, so let's flip that. And we'll create a few more darker buildings at the bottom in the foreground just to give that illusion of depth. And then repeating the same steps using the same brushes until we get something like this. I think we can agree this looks pretty flat at the moment, but with the introduction of just a couple of well-placed colour fill layers, we suddenly got a bit of life and colour. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing for the clouds, so I'm just going to use some giant brush strokes for now just to get some texture down. Add a little bit of soft lighting. Okay, that's uh, not looking too bad. Um, what should we do next? I think we will flip it upside down so we match the original shot. Let's add in an upside down overhanging ledge, just using the polygon or lasso tool for this. Select a brown, duplicate and flip horizontal. Okay. Now the plan is to create some spiders that represent our main characters. Just gonna wing this and hope for the best. I feel like it'd be a lot easier in something like Illustrator, but we'll see how it goes. Got the main shapes for the bodies. Now I'm just gonna create these kind of leg connector jointy thingies something like that and just continue using the pen tool just to create some kind of vague shape for the leg a different shape for each section okay not terrible repeat this step for the other legs and then the same thing on the other side and for the head now a little bit of brushwork to help give it some dimension and i'm loving this brush by the way perfect look for this just working over the legs and same thing, but we'll start to introduce a little bit of colour, that Miles Morales red. Also creating a kind of crosshatch effect. Dropping in the logo, which will clip to our layer and then set the layer blending mode to screen. Let's darken that a bit. And just scale it down to find a nice position, something like that. And then we can simply duplicate this group, make it smaller, play with the shapes a little, and uh, give it some styling to fit Gwen's character. Let's brush in a little bit of texture and highlights on that ledge. And then I'm going to drop in this web graphic, change the colour to white and then position at the bottom. Just vary the lighting a little with some paintwork. And extend the web to meet our spiders. Drop the title in there. And then to create that chromatic aberration effect that we see in the movies, I'll create a flattened copy of the artwork, 
double click the layer to open the layer styling panel, uncheck the red channel, and then simply use the arrow keys to nudge the artwork upwards and left slightly. And with a few more tweaks, here's what we end up with. I tried to get a little experimental with the title. I think the execution needs a little more work, but I like the idea. The new brushes were a pleasure to use, so all in all, I think we did an okay job. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with some of these brilliant posters by Oli Moss. I've always wanted to have a crack at creating something like this, so what better time than now? So for this next poster, we're gonna embrace the classic double exposure, picture-in-picture -picture silhouette. Let's find out if I can pull it off. The obvious place to start with this one is with the silhouette we're going to build our poster inside of. In this case, ET makes the most sense since it's a pretty recognisable shape and the focus of the film. In the film, ET has a glowing heart, and as a nod to this we're going to capitalise on a specific sunset scene. So I'll begin by laying down some warm ambient lighting, and then use the circular marquee tool to create the sun. Let's add a little bit of blur, about 5 should do it. Sometimes the sun can look a little distorted because of the heat haze, so I'm going to use the warp tool just to alter the shape ever so slightly. And then we'll add some brighter, more intense light closer to the sun. Okay, perfect. Now let's paint a mountain across the bottom portion of the sun, and then I'll change the light in to match the scene. And just soften those edges using a soft round brush. It's missing a bit of light bleed on top of the mountain. There we go. I'll place a colour fill adjustment layer at the top of the layers panel and set the layer blending mode to lighten. This is just going to help tie the existing colours together and make them a bit more cohesive. Next we're going to start building up the scene with some trees. I'll use various techniques to do this to show you multiple ways of how you might achieve a similar look. For these first ones I'm using some tree brushes that I've created. These are a great asset to have and always come in handy. I'm just plonking those down, moving them into position and then matching the colours of the scene. And again we'll add some light bleed to this tree on the right. Cool. Another option is to use 3D assets like these. We'll just change the colour to black and then find a suitable position. Okay, cool, that's a good start. I'm going to use a brush to lay down some clouds. And then I'll set the layer blending mode to overlay. And then using a larger duplicate of the same layer, I can use these clouds as a natural way to give the body a bit of form, suggesting where the neck and head is. Let's add a few birds flying out of the scene just to create an area of interest and give the artwork another layer. Just helps make the composition a bit more interesting. Definitely one of my favourite parts is when you add a nice layer of noise or grain. Just gives the artwork some nice texture and is particularly fitting for this one given the retro 80s vibe. You know what's coming next, it's time for Elliot. To save time I'll use another 3D element for the bike and then uh, select the right colour and then I'll paint in Elliot and E.T. Let's add some inner glow. Something like that. And then we use a soft round brush using the colour white and the layer set to overlay to paint in some light bleed. And simply repeat this step for a couple more riders. And here's the final image. Oh wait, it's my Photoshop courses? That you can purchase now from my website? Strange they should appear like that. <clears throat> and here's the final ET poster. I had a lot of fun making this one. I know it's a pretty simple design and only took under an hour to make, but I definitely like to explore more ideas using this double exposure concept. For our final piece, we're working with limited information as the Wonka movie hasn't been released yet at the time of this recording, and we only have the trailers to draw from. So we'll try and incorporate iconic elements from the franchise and weave in themes from the trailer. Willy Wonka, inventor, magician, and chocolate maker. And it's the magician part that's going to be the inspiration for this piece. You all know the classic magician's hat and wand setup. Well, that's what I'm going to base my artwork on. So I'll start by creating a little bit of ground texture using a nice noisy brush. And now we're going to jump straight into creating the hat. So I'll just create a brown square and then I'm going to use the warp tool just to give it a bit of squeeze. Shrink that down a touch. And we'll just brush in some shadow along the edges so it appears cylindrical. 
And I'll just put a splodge of paint here and then use the warp tool to create some kind of folds and highlights on the hat surface. One more over here. A little bit of shadow along the top where the rim of the hat is going to be. Let's make that now using the circular marquee tool and then I'll move that into position. I'll create another one underneath so it's got a bit of thickness to it. And now I'll just create the hole where the head goes. And a couple of highlights on the rim. Okay, that'll do for now. So we've got the hat, but instead of a wand, we're gonna create Willy Wonka's cane. The stick is simple enough, and for the top part of the cane, I'll create this kind of light bulb shape. Shrink that down a little. And simply paint in some highlights and shadows. Next, we can add some more distinct shapes along the top, which will fill with gold so it's got a bit more flash. Another one here and one more here. And we'll set the layer blending mode to color dodge. Cool, let's move that into position. Everything looks like it's floating, so let's create some shadows so it feels more planted. And one for the cane. And we'll create some longer shadows for the hat. A Little bit of blur. And that'll do. And I'm just gonna add this gold strip at the back. I don't really know why yet, but it looks nice. And now we'll just create some simple looking sweets or candy for you American watchers. Just playing around with some various shapes. We'll add a little bit of texture and shadow using those noisy brushes again. And then I'll just create a few more, one of them being based off one that we see in the trailer. And I'm just going to duplicate these and scatter them around, the idea being that they're floating out of the hat. Speaking of floating, it looks like we get to see the precursor to Wonka's famous fizzy lifting drink in the new Wonka movie, in the form of some delicious looking sweets. So we definitely need to have a few characters heading skywards as well. And we'll create some simple silhouettes with those for now. Let's add a few golden streamers using the pen tool and stroke path. Paint in some shadows to give the illusion of folds. And we'll add to the magic by creating a few simple stars as well. Almost forgot to add some shadow under the cane. I've got this nice Victorian pattern which we'll just apply to the background. Taking some more visual cues from the trailer, I'm just going to add this cardinal point graphic below the hat. And here's the final result. Maybe not quite as scrumdiddly umptious as I'd hoped, but this one out of the three posters felt like the furthest from my comfort zone, so it was still fun to challenge myself and try something a bit new. This was definitely a challenge, not only figuring out how to create each piece, but coming up with an idea and concept to begin with. Let me know which is your favourite piece in the comments, and if you decide to have a go at creating an alternative poster yourself, then be sure to use the tag Community on Instagram. I'd love to see what you create. Until next, hang on a sec. There's one more I didn't show you. My fantasy pack of overlays and assets is also now available. Cut that out! Cut that out!